power, it's uh, drama, and it's uh, also team. Fast, exciting, and fearless. Very exciting and extremely dangerous. That's a job. You know, it, it was, it's, it's sport, but it's, it's a way of making a living, so you've got to be first. So that's it. To explain what Speedway is, it's four riders going around an oval track, extremely fast, no brakes, the race lasts approximately one minute and they do four laps, so you can guess what the speed may be. It's four guys um, going from a standing start on bikes that will accelerate a drag bike on a drag strip from 0 to 60. Um, tight competitive racing uh, with a fence around the outside, no brakes, um, bar to bar action. It's exciting stuff, it's really short and intense. To me, I think it, it, it boils down to the simplicity again. It's about the drama of the moment. Number one, this is totally unexpected, a complete turn of events. It's about having a two hour show in there. You have the racing, and if you get it right as well, you have the interviews with the riders, you can get the personalities over there, and that's very, very important. To me, it was a job that I'd be the best of. So, you know, it's a, it's a very difficult question. To, you know, for me to describe Speedway as exciting and um, tough, tough people or whatever, is as other people would see it. You know, I'd meet like me asking you about your job. How do you see your job? Well, it's work. You know, it's interesting because if you was riding on a Speedway bike and. It's the first time you've ever been out there. You know, straight away, you've got crowds looking over the fence at you. Your expectations are high. You go out there, it could be a wet night. The track is a cinder-based track and it can fly up in your face. It can block off your goggles. You go out there, your adrenaline's pumping. There's a certain amount of fear and trepidation because the race beforehand, some rider was carried off on a stretcher, but when you get back in the pits afterwards, especially if you won that race, you fell on a real high. Perk's got a decent start that time, but Chris Harris is there as well. Watch for the Frenchman coming around the outside, though. Pelletius there comes around the outside of Perks. He's in a sandwich here, is Ellis, but he does very well to stay on. But it's Pelletio and all oh, the two. Yeah, so Speedway, I mean, the bikes to look at are very different. They're very unique. Obviously, they're designed to only turn in one direction, um, which is left. So we go counterclockwise. Bizarrely, we turn right to turn left because you have to counter steer. So there's a lot of upper body strength and, and flexibility used. Um, obviously, there is no brakes, which kind of sounds a bit of an odd scenario. But in some respects, it kind of, someone say it's safer. But when, when you see the sport, you can understand that brakes would actually make it probably more dangerous because you'd get some plonker start brake checking you, which would be disastrous. So, um, but the bike's a single cylinder, we've got no gears, um, 500cc, like I said, uh, they will out accelerate a drag bike from 0 to 60, so they've got an awful lot of power. Um, and yeah, he's, he's very different, I mean, you use a lot of different muscles on a speedo bike than you would on a on a normal conventional road bike or like a motocross bike or anything like that, so um, riding it is, is very different, it's quite strange, you see riders from other disciplines will jump on a bike and they look like a cat in headlights because it's so different the way the, the your way you're positioned on the bike is, is very unique so it's something that kind of it takes you a little while to get your head around the fact that you're going into a corner with no brakes and you actually want the the back wheel to step out on you which every other sport they want full traction we actually want to create less traction to, to turn the outside of Jason Doyle, but Kennett's dropped to the back of the field. Eddie Kennett's got work to do. Super stuff from Scott Nichols out. Front. I think it's you have to have some natural ability, but I think it's sheer determination and the will to succeed. I think you have to be um, very headstrong and and determined. What does it take to be a top speedway rider? It takes 
first of all, you need skill. You've got to have that skill. You, you've got to be fearless to a certain extent, although fearless, you've still got to be careful. You don't want to keep crashing. Um, you've got to have top quality equipment. You've got to invest in your equipment. You've got to keep fit. It's not like the old days when you had a few beers. Nowadays, people go to the gym, they eat the right foods, they go to bed early, they keep them. It's almost like speedway to a certain extent is like being a professional footballer. You've got to keep yourself totally fit because speedway is so close. The difference between first and last is fractions of a second virtually and that's the difference. You've got to be really on top of your game. I think the first, the first British title was obviously, it, it's again, it's, you, we all have these uh, kind of milestones, stepping stones, goals that you want to achieve and obviously being British champion was was uh, one of them, um, you know, cause I, especially I'm sort of prior to I remember being in my first actual British final before I actually won it. It was, you know, that was a big achievement in itself to be up against, you know, obviously a riders a lot older than me, Jeremy Donks, Chris Louie and Mark Lauren, people like that who I kind of looked up to and then I was like, wow, I'm, I'm racing against them for a title here. And then, you know, obviously it's a few years later I went on to achieve that. and. So that, that's pretty cool. It's kind of it gives you those kind of butterflies in your tummy where it is. It's an awesome sense of satisfaction to know that you've achieved one of your childhood dreams. Winning that British title and, and, and a few more after that, I think, is something that then uh, rewarded me with being captain of Great Britain in the World Cup. Okay, Scott No, of course, it's an honour though to um, to stand there and know that you were captain of your country, and you know didn't achieve the, the gold, but we we got silver on a couple of occasions, and so that was pretty cool. It's going from one, it's going from that step to that step, and and I know when I look back now, I kind of kick myself in a way because I I, I feel if I was um, a bit more selfish and a bit more just you know fixated on on trying to achieve that dream, then I maybe could have got a little bit further, but that's hindsight. You know, I'm happy to where I got, and I think it's, um, if I had been that way, I wouldn't have a lot of things around me now that are important to me, so it's it's finding a balance and a compromise. You know, I, I like to have my, you said about family time, I like to have that family time as well, and I perhaps wasn't prepared to sacrifice as many personal things as, as some of the top riders do. I think to get to the top, you have to be very, very selfish and determined. Probably just being the best at what you did for once. Didn't mean you're best every day of the week, but you were the best. And you know, anybody that does anything, they like to be the best. If you're a high jump, you want to jump higher than anyone. Or you long jump longer than anybody. But it was just, a, you know, that was my sport, and that was, you know, the the big thing was the world's championship. And I mean, so in those days, it was 80, 90 thousand people. So it was. A lot of people watching you make a fool of yourself or do well. So there's kind of no in between. It's not a it's not a team sport you can hide behind anybody. It was you. You know, and you're responsible for how good or bad you were. It's not just a top rider. If you're gonna be any kind of top at anything, there's certain things you've got to do. And to be the top spear rider, you've got to be smart and clever and fit. Heat number 16 it is, there is Crump in the blue helmet, needs a good oh. start here, bit of movement at the start as well, has the referee let it go, I can't see a red light, no I can't, and the uh, world champion again has missed the start there. Oh, oh. That is a nasty accident with Nichols down the back, oh no it wasn't Nichols, sorry, it was Nichols, <laughs> we've had two DNFs there. Yeah, absolutely. Initially it's Carpanese who stopped there, that was the shot we got first, but there, Nichols out of control coming off that first corner and hit the fence on one wheel and almost got like wrapped around the top of the fence like a rag doll. There, there is most definitely uh, a danger element uh, to it. I think it's part of the appeal, part of the adrenaline rush, both for the uh, for the riders themselves and indeed for the public who are watching. It's, it's one of those sort of double-edged things. Uh, people will go to Speedway because of the 
to a degree because of the drama, because of the danger that's involved, but they don't want to see any form of uh, crash uh, in there. So when it does happen uh, in there, it's, it's something that's not necessarily a, a nice position, but the, the fact that there is a danger element to it definitely is a, uh, is, uh, is, is a positive. Uh, I think it's been estimated that about a third of riders every season will be out of action at some time with an injury, whether usually a collarbone injury, uh, a leg injury, those are the predominant uh, ones uh, that do tend to occur. So the riders know it's for real um, in there. The sport has changed certainly over the last 20, 30, 40 years uh, in there. You now have air fences on the, uh, the, the bends of the tracks, which again, okay, they're not uh, bouncy castles, but they certainly do cushion the blow. The body armor has improved certainly the removal of the lighting facility so that it is a distance from the uh, uh, from the track itself so that there's no danger of a rider actually colliding with a with a lamp post uh, a floodlight post um, is, is a big big step forward there but there will always be a danger element um, to it I think as I say it's, it's a double-edged thing it's part not only of the of, of the allure of it but unfortunately it, it, it's also uh, has that side product of, 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 of injury and, and, and taking guys out of the game hopefully for only a short period of time I think I lost my finger. I think probably you got 200 quid for that. You can't be an idiot because you're going to get hurt very quickly, and then you've got no career. So it's 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 a balance, isn't it? And it's a it's a tough balance because you know you're not exaggerating and say it's dangerous. I think if you go back 20, 30 years, it was all about the skill factor. And as it, as in any motorsport, whether it's F1 or uh, two wheel variety, including speedway, there uh, the the problem at the moment is that the sport is becoming faster it is more difficult to overtake the people with the faster bikes as opposed to necessarily the uh, the best the, the most skillful situation uh, can win races as well uh, often you'll hear people talking about the riders being uh, uh, rocket jockeys that they're on these uh, uh, automatic missiles guided missiles that, that take them around the track and uh, that is very important the tracks remain have remained the same in that time so they have unless there's a new track opening um, you've got the same facility the same uh, ability to ride that track as you had 20, 30 years ago, but the bikes have changed uh, in that regard as well. Uh, so they, um, that, is, that is something, at some point, the sport has to slow down physically uh, in order to bring that, that, that skill factor um, back again. In its heyday, it was really in the 40s, and it gradually was going to the 50s. But there was several London top clubs. Wembley could get 70, 80,000 for a league match. I don't know how many people have appeared at Wembley, but probably we've appeared at Wembley as more than Bobby Moore or any top footballers, because it was a weekly show there every week. And, you know, that. Um, it's just become part and parcel of it, but there's, there's kind of nothing like Wembley, really. Has Speedway declined in popularity and in crowd numbers? Um, it certainly has. Nowadays, no London clubs whatsoever. I think it's declined in many, many ways. A, similar to ice hockey in a way, it, it didn't move with the times. It, it, it stayed as it was. Sadly, even the crowds today are more matured people. It's got to start to appeal to a younger audience. And sadly, it could decline totally. Sadly, um, you know, because I remember as a kid going to watch my local track at Ipswich in the 80s and, you know, the, the crowds were a lot bigger. Um, so it is sad, I, I think, a big kind of factor in that is that the world has changed an awful lot. It, it, it's sad because it's an exciting sport, but it, it's a little bit s stood in time. You know, there's four blokes and it's a little bit samey. And it, it seems like it needs something a little bit different, but what it is, I don't really know. Do I think Speedway can be saved? Um... I have my doubts. I'm not saying it would die out totally, but it's a difficult sport in many, many ways. It's so dependent on the weather. And even in the summer months, we could have several days of rain, you know, people turn up, the event is cancelled, people travel distances. Some clubs miss three or four weeks without holding a meeting. That's not good for the 
for sport, it's not good for the spectators. And even to the extent you could go to a speedway meeting, part way through the meeting it gets cancelled because the weather's so bad, the track conditions are bad. I think it's got to reinvent itself in many ways. It's got to have a bit more razzmatazz. The excitement is there, but the stadiums that are still open are in states of decline. They've got to get more modern, you know. The only real stadium uh, of any substance in many, many ways is they've opened a brand new stadium in Manchester, which is, you know, dedicated to Speedway. Paul has got an excellent Speedway stadium with where you can dine, you know, these are the sort of features people want nowadays. They want to go where they can have a meal, watch the speedway in comfort, in the warm. Um, but it's not easy, not easy. There's, there's no doubt about it. If, if the business continues to, to operate the way it has been uh, the last few years, the way it's been operating 30, 40 years ago during what were the good old days in there and expecting that making no change will somehow change the circumstances and the appeal of the sport, then I think uh, it, is, it is deluded in that, in that regard. Uh, there has to be new, uh, a new outlook. There has to be a new positioning for the, uh, for the business to move uh, forward. It can be made pertinent to uh, uh, today's generation. I, I don't have any doubt about that. I think if, 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 if any of us doubted the uh, general appeal, we might as well all uh, go home uh, now and, and give up the ghost there. But you know, the basics are there, the drama, the excitement, the no breaks, the team element element that I mentioned uh, earlier. It's just a question of repackaging it, remarketing it, creating uh, a new aura around it to make it uh, more pertinent, more relevant uh, to today's audience and the WWE there, but uh, they've done exactly that. They, they reinvented themselves uh, there. They created a sports entertainment uh, type situation and we need to do, do the same. We need to make our own characters larger than life. Uh, I appreciate that's difficult when you're talking uh, the average rider being sort of five foot six uh, in there. They're not the size of, uh, of a John Cena or uh, uh, a typically large uh, heavyweight uh, boxer in there. So how do you make those guys larger than life? You can do it with what they say on the mic. You can do it by creating a personality around them, whether it's nicknames at a basic level, but just getting them to, to, to work that little bit harder with the audience and with, uh, with sponsors. You can do it with music as well uh, in there. You need all of the things going longer term. We need to find a way without um, disengaging them to engage that younger audience and, and, and make that product much more uh, amenable and much more relevant to the 21st century. Um, I think you have to look at the positives. I think the fact that we have you know, had Sky Sports involved for a number of years and now BT, I think perhaps maybe it needs a, a, a sort of a change direction. I think it needs some, some fresh blood just to push it in a new direction. I think um, you know, when, you, when you've been involved, because a lot of the people involved with Speed have been involved a long time, and I think you kind of almost get a little bit stuck in your ways. I think you need some, some fresh blood uh, that can can jump on the new technology. I think at, at the races, I think it would be so cool to have some apps involved where the younger kids could, can get involved and it could be quite simple, you know, with, with timings and stuff. They could just have fun seeing who was the actual quickest on the track and just little bits like that, just to, just to bring it into uh, the next generation and and kind of move with the times a little bit. And I think now is a, a crucial time. I think we, I think it's fair to say it's, it's a sport that's comes across on TV very well and it's done well. I think it just needs to make the best of this moment to, like you say, for the next 10 years to push it to newer things.